Hi guys, welcome back to We Should Talk, a pop culture interview series from In The Know. I'm your host, Gibson Johns, and today on the podcast, we have Kelty Knight, who you may know as one of the co-hosts of the long-running podcast, Lady Gang. You may have also recognized her from her work on E! or previously E.T., but her latest project is being the creator and executive producer and co-host of a new CBS show called Superfan. Each episode of Superfan is based around uh, one big musical artist, whether that's Shania Twain, LL Cool J, Little Big Town, Kelsey Ballerini, Pitbull. They got some great big names for this first season. And um, each episode, they bring on like five super fans of each artist, and it's, they compete to kind of get this amazing curated VIP personalized package to kind of experience with their favorite artists. And it's a really fun celebratory show. There's a lot of music interwoven throughout. You'll be singing along. Each artist performs on each episode. Um, and it's just fun. It's, it's great summer TV. It's very positive. It's very wholesome. Um, and she created the show. So it was really interesting to hear about sort of the evolution of the show, what it went through to kind of get to air. It's been a very long process, literally five or 10 years. Um, and Kelty's just one of the best in the biz. She's hilarious. She's super smart. And I just admire anybody like her who has their hand in so many different pots. And um, she definitely has a career that that I very much admire and, and maybe want to emulate someday. So um, keep listening for my interview with Kelty Knight. Tune in to Superfan on Wednesdays at 9 p.m. on CBS after Big Brother. And please rate, review, and subscribe to We Should Talk on Apple Podcasts or wherever you podcast. All right, so we're here with Kelty Knight, who is one of the co-hosts of the long-running podcast, Lady Gang. She is a chief correspondent for E! News, and now she is the creator, executive producer, and co-host of Superfan, which is premiering on CBS this week. Kelty, I'm so excited to talk to you. How are you? I'm so excited. I feel like the gestation period has been long and I'm about to give birth to the baby. And this is like all I've cared about for over five years. And I just, it feels incredible for it finally to be out in the world. So we'll get more into this, but it's been a five year process. It's been a really long process. I actually registered a version of this show in 2014. Wow. Oh my God. Yeah. So almost that a decade. Wild. Wow. Um, so I think we should just stay at the top, very top of this. And you post about this on Instagram, but you are permitted to be promoting this show through the, it, this is not covered by the SAG after contract. So you're not like breaking any sort of picket line by doing this, um, which is something you post about on Instagram. I think it's probably important to say at the top of some of these things, because I think a lot of, a lot of people don't really know exactly where the line is for some of this stuff. And so I think it's probably just important to say that at the top. Absolutely. And, um, it, it, you know, I've been a member of SAG after for a long time. And so this is, this has been a really hard time, but when I spoke to SAG after about this show, this falls under a different contract as well as my work at E! News. And they were actually like, Hey, if you can hold an event, if you can go and do, you know, we're doing an event in Times Square. Like if you can hire some people, if you can hire a glam team, like that's really good because nobody's working right now. And if you can help a few people be able to pay their rent this month, and it's okay with us, like, then go do it. So, it, you know, my, yeah. it's bittersweet. Like I said on Instagram, this is a very bittersweet moment because I I know that I'm really having a big lucky moment and that it's so heartbreaking for so many others. Yeah, I mean, and that's important. I think that that, that gets forgotten, I think, in some of this is like some of the people who are maybe like tangentially in the industry or directly in the industry who it's kind of out of their control, like they're not in this union, but they are kind of out of work just just kind of like as a byproduct of the whole situation so um obviously we're hoping for some sort of reconciliation moving forward soon but um again i'm i'm, I'm glad that you i really like that message you put on instagram um this week because i think and it seemed like it was really well received too yeah yeah it was and i just wanted to like listen i'm running around and in, in my outfits and give like having the party but i also really wanted to make sure that everyone knew that you know i'm i'm not that much of an app <laughs> that I would you know, have forgotten that a lot of people are really struggling. Yeah, a hundred percent. So um, let's get into super fan. So okay. th again, this is a big moment for you. You're the creator of the show. You executive produce it. You're a co-host of the show. Is this, this is your first time kind of wearing all of those hats, correct? At the same time? Yes. So I had a show based on our podcast, Lady Gang, right. years ago, and, and we were executive producers, but really in name only. Um, and so this is the first time I've ever start to finish taken a show, sold it to a network, been involved in the budget and the hiring of the staff and all the stuff that makes a show um, and the edits. And so it's been really thrilling. Um, and I, I just... 
Like, I love that part of it so much. So now it's going to be hard for me to just host someone else's show. I always want, now I'm going to always want to be the boss. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So we, we mentioned it's, it's, you know, you registered a version of the show almost 10 years ago, this one in particular, maybe like a five year process. Mm-hmm. Talk me through some of that path of getting a show like this made. Like, do you, do you face a lot of rejection along the way? Is it mostly about like just development of something, bringing it to air? Talk me through some of that process. Well, I, I have a co-creator and co-executive producer, Jody Roth, and she was a longtime executive at CBS before she left. And we partnered up and I brought this idea to her and I was like, I have this idea for this show on fans. And she really helped make it sparkle because she's just like the smartest woman I know. But um, it there's so much rejection and there's so much uncertainty. And even if you have a great idea, like I think Superfan is one of those shows you've never seen anything like it on television. Mm-hmm. You've never seen huge A-list stars like Ella Cool J and Shania Twain be two seconds away from their fans while their fans are like pleading their case on why they love them, like and and, and giving away these prizes. Like it really is such an original idea, and um, and so even with such a good, 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 good idea, there's so many hoops to jump through, you know, is, does the network want a game show? Does the network want a music show? Um, is there time in their schedule? You know, what's the budget going to be? Can you book people for it? How do you find the fans? And we were doing a lot of this during COVID. Mm. And so it, you know, there were many, many uphill battles, but I think it's one of those things that you know, now that we're in the promo, I'm, I'm, I'm watching the show more and I'm watching the clips and like the joy on the fans faces and the joy on the stars faces getting to interact with their fans like this, you actually just forget all the bad stuff. It's like, it was never hard. I never cried right. myself to sleep. Like I just love everything is beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love it. And, and, you know, you mentioned like the booking of these people and like you, you got some really amazing big names. The, the first two episodes are LL Cool J, Shania Twain, there's Kelsey Ballerini, Little Big Town. It's it's a really great group of artists that are in this first, this first group of episodes. Were, were you directly like trying to like talk me through the booking process? Because it's like, you can, oh you gosh. can take, you can take this in a lot of different directions, but I feel like the, the names that you guys settled on or got yeah. kind of they're cross-generational. They appeal to mass audiences uh, talking about that process. Yeah. I mean, so we did what every show on television does, which is we went to Beyonce and we're <laughs> like, Beyonce, do you want to do super fan? And I, I didn't go to Beyonce, so I don't even know what the response was, but then we quickly moved on. Um, and we put together a really eclectic list because we wanted to have, uh, a lot of music covered a lot of different fans covered and we really went after artists that had huge musical catalogs we wanted them to have decades of music and work um and we and then we really wanted it to be artists that have those special fan bases you know life for fans so that was really important um and then yes i was incredibly incredibly involved so was my partner jody so were the executives at cbs jack sussman and others who work tirelessly on the grammy awards on cbs every year like we were calling our friends calling people that owed us favors promising favors for the future um just being like what can i do to you know because you're it's a new show nobody knows what it is right so, I mean, I had to get on a two hour Zoom with LL Cool J and walk him through exactly what would happen at each moment of the show and what it was. And by the end, he like sat back in his sunglasses, he's like, no, no, this is cool. This is dope. Like, I, I love totally it. Got it. Yeah, so. he got it. Yeah, 100%. I, I, I don't, I can't imagine why that wouldn't appeal to somebody, but I do feel like one thing I do love about these episodes that I've seen is it takes the concept of a super fan, which I think maybe like the past like decade or so through social media, like, it's been it's got, been kind of relabeled as Stan. It has this sort of like negative light sometimes of like the Stan wars and people like kind of o- o- overstepping their boundary with their favorite artists and and whatever. We've seen this constantly, especially I think with female pop stars. But I feel like this show sort of reclaims that super fan label and makes it like a holistic, a, a very positive, wholesome, earnest thing where it's like there's a safety between the fan and the artist. Is that also kind of part of the DNA of this show for you? Yeah, I think, listen, we're, we were never going to put anyone in any kind of danger. And I would say that anyone who's a fan and, and a part of a fan base, there's there's maybe 0.0002% yeah. of bad apples that ruin it for everybody else, like that are throwing things at BB Rexa while she's on right. stage and Harry Styles. Like, 
everyone else in that arena is being cool. And so, you know, this is a, a representation of those fans that are really cool. And, and of course they had to go through all kinds of, uh, you know, testing and checks and, and we need to make sure these were like great human beings. But I do think that you have to think of it like everyone has a hobby and I feel like everyone on earth just wants to be seen. So whether you love, for me, like reading, drag race, um, makeup, TikTok, like, you know, if that's your, those are the communities you exist in, like some people exist in the Shania Twain community. Yeah. And I think it's just about finding friends as adults and, and feeling, feeling seen. And so finding these fans, being a part of that community, it was all positive. We really, and, and what's cool is that all the fans are friends now. Like the Pitbull fans oh, I love that. episode, they all have been traveling around the US going all of the stops on Pitbull's tour together. They're all friends, it's a giant text chain. Fans, we're doing a big Times Square premiere. Not only are the, some of the LL Cool J fans coming, there's fans for the Kelsey Ballerini episode, which isn't for another six weeks, flying in love. just to see each other. So this yeah. is like female, I mean, adult friendships through music. Yeah, 100%. And I think that's another really nice positive about the show is that like, yeah, there's a winner who gets this great VIP kind of curated package from the artist at the end. But even like the quote unquote losers, like they still got to interact with their favorite artist of all time. They get to hug them. They get to tell them their story and express how much they mean to them. There's still a huge, there's still a lot to gain for all five of the people that compete on each episode. Yes. And of course, each one of our superstars is doing a big performance on the right. show. And so it's really important to us when you're eliminated from the game, you don't just go back to the audience. You go sort of to the side of the stage, there are VIP section. So yes, you're not winning super fan, but you're also watching Ella Cool J or Shania or Pitbull perform literally the best seat you could ever have in a concert in your life. Yeah, no, it, it's, it's, it's a dream for so many of these people. And so I think that that's, that shouldn't be lost. But you know, in doing research for this, Kelty, I didn't realize how much of how much of like the beginnings of your career and your background is in music and dance. Like you hosted a show for Live Nation. You were primarily a dancer for many years. Yes. Um, is that a through line for you? Sort of like has has obviously now you do tons of celebrity interviews and coverage, but have have the musical bits throughout your career kind of had an extra specialness or passion from you uh, kind of through the years? That is such a great question. Um, and bravo on your background. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, for me, I grew up as a classical ballerina and and was a was a dancer. I, I was a backup dancer for Beyonce and Taylor and many people appearing in movies and TV shows. And I always love music. I can't sing a lick. I auditioned unsuccessfully for over 30 Broadway shows. Wow. Um, I can't, I would always make it past the dance cut and never the singing cut. Like I cannot sing, which is why the show's amazing because you don't need to be able to sing. <laughs> you can be on a shiny floor game yes. show. Um, but for me, you know, when I transitioned into hosting, the only thing I really knew anything about was music because I had danced and been a part of so many musicians' lives through touring and videos and things like that. So that just seemed like an easy beat for me to start being in. And then, you know, early on, I got really lucky. I, I picked a few really good uh, artists like Ed Sheeran and Imagine Dragons who couldn't get press. Nobody knew who they were. And I said, hey, can I do an interview with you for my digital show? Wow. And they're like, sure. And then Ed, you know, two years later, Ed's inviting me to scooter around his arena he's playing. So I was I was really lucky and, and music has been just a through line. I'm married to a music manager. Um, it's, it's just my whole life just revolves around the music industry. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I, you can't mention that you danced background for Taylor Swift without me asking about it. She's having one of, of the course. biggest, one of the biggest years of her career. The Eras yeah. tour is like breaking all these records. Yeah. What was your experience like dancing with her? When was that? And kind of what's it like seeing the pinnacle that she's at right now? Yeah, so I danced for Taylor. Uh, one of the big events was the VMAs when she did, you, it was the Kanye VMAs. Wow. Uh, along with me outside of Radio City Music Hall, I'm on the taxi cab right in front of her. Um, I just remember her mom coming by all the dancers and giving us all fearless guitar picks um, for in our pockets for good luck. And I still have mine. And then for years, I saw Taylor when she was doing a lot more press and interviews. I would see her once I had moved to hosting backstage at, you know, the American Music Awards and the Grammys and things. And she's just so lovely. I'm. She still sends me like gifts, which Amazing. is so crazy. Like she just sent me the... Um, 
a purple sweater, the for cardigan, now yeah. coming out the cardigan and a nice note. And like, you know, I, I just, it's nice that she remembers who I am. I think, um, I'm so impressed by her and I think more than anything, she, she really makes other women feel like they can accomplish, um, anything that they want in business mm. you know because she's so talented but she's such a smart businesswoman and there aren't a lot of female show creators there aren't a lot of females that get shows made on major networks um and so i'm like well if i were a man then i'd be the man like i'm i'm you know she's she's very empowering very much so I mean, you just quoted the man, but then the other person you danced for, Beyonce, if she has if I were a boy. Like she's also <laughs> having one of the biggest years of her career with the Renaissance yes. Tour. When did you dance for her? That was my very last gig ever. I danced for her when she was receiving an Icon Award or something. It was at the Billboard Awards, maybe. Okay. Las Vegas. We did Who Run the World. Oh, yeah. Um, she did a whole documentary thing about the, the prep for that. Yeah. Yes. And it was really, listen, I'm like, I was never like a Beyonce dancer. I'm not Ashley ever. Like, I was never like on tour with her for nine years. But you had that moment. I don't have her phone number. Um, But I like, <laughs> I put, Miss Tina put me in a fringe short and I was there and it was just incredible. And I, I think Beyonce is, um, Beyonce makes me feel like it's okay to be a perfectionist mm. and watching her documentaries and, and working with her, you know, there's no stopping. It's like, if we need to rehearse till four in the morning, we're rehearsing till four in the morning until it is perfect. Mm -hmm. And she will not put out something that she doesn't feel in her heart is 100%. And sometimes when you're a woman um, in a position of power, especially for me, when I created super fan and I'm doing the edits and I'm having to really fight for a certain clip to be in or the way that I want the stage to look or maybe the graphics like you you start to feel like oh maybe I'm being too bossy and I don't mm. think people will like me and you know Beyonce is someone that's like no actually I, I I want to be a nice person but I want everyone to understand that like it's gonna be my way and that is why that's my superpower and so I'm very empowered by her in that way that's amazing is that is that one of the biggest learnings that you've taken from this experience of being a creating show and being an executive producer of like reminding yourself of that? Or is there something else that you've also kind of learned a lot through this process that you're going to take with you to future projects? I think that the real truth is um, learning to trust our guts in mm. these moments. Like I, I, I really was you know, our Jody and I's hands are in every element of this show from the clothes that I'm wearing. I wanted to wear high end designer clothes on every single episode because I grew up in a very small town with not a lot. And fashion was my escape to Hollywood, watching the red carpets. And so I didn't want it to I didn't want it to look like, oh, I could, you know, get this at this mark where I wanted it to be fashion, 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 and it's like such a fantasy. The stage, I wanted it to look a certain way. I wanted it to be a circle. I wanted to have a white floor. The way that the graphic is on the super fan logo, there are no soft corners on any of the letters because this is a, this is a powerful show. It's an impactful show. It's a, a chic, a bold show. I didn't want it to feel soft. So like, Every little detail wow. of what the show is was thought out. And um, for me, it's about trusting my gut because the show is not perfect. The show is fantastic. Um, if we get a se season two, I would, you know, nip and change a couple things because sure. I would say I'm a perfectionist. But like the things that I, I'm like, I mm, wish I hadn't done that are the things that at my gut at that moment, I was like, oh, we should. And then you're just like, don't worry about it. It's great. And you know, I'm a perfectionist, so mm -hmm. I've picked it apart a hundred times, but people really, really love it. Um, yeah, and a lot good. of the journalists that I've been talking to are like, it's so really fun. It. Yeah, it's, it's really, it really is. It really is a fun show. Um, you talk about trusting your gut. Is, is there a moment from maybe not from this show in particular, but just in your, from your career in general, where you didn't trust your gut that you think about sometimes or that you would have done differently? I have one from Superfan, actually. Mm. 
Um, and this is a great story. So uh, we filmed Super Fan a few months ago, and uh, one of the, the dress that I wore for the Pitbull, I know it goes back to fashion, but the dress that I wore for the Pitbull episode is this like maroon kind of vinyl latex dress. Mm-hmm. It's Alex Perry, which is an Australian designer. It's turtleneck, it's long, and then it has the matching boots. So it's like one piece, it's very Kim Kardashian. And since I was the executive producer, I was like, what's Kelty going to wear for the episode, executive producer? Oh, Kelty's going to wear this. Great. It's approved. Like there was no one I had to approve it by except me and Jody. So we we're like, great. And I wore it. And um, I got a lot of feedback after the episode was being shown around and different. And people were like, what is this dress? What is she wearing? And I was like, God, maybe I, maybe I do have bad style or maybe I went, I pushed too far. I pushed too far on the fashion. And I'm literally walking in LAX at the airport two months ago. And Kristen Bell, the mm. sweetheart of America, is on Living Simple Magazine or Simply Living Magazine, the cover, wearing my exact latex dress. And I was like, no, 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 you were ahead of the curve. And also, if she can wear it on a magazine about organizing your closet, then you can certainly wear it on your game show. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. There we go. I love that. Go, go with your gut. That, that's, yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. Um so Kelty, I mean, obviously a lot of people will recognize you from, I mean, you've worked for three of the biggest entertainment news brands. I think that there are in North America, at least, um, have, you know, through, I guess, like the last decade or so of, of working in this, in the business, what kind of big changes have you noticed in entertainment news landscape or how you cover celebrities or how we talk about celebrities as a culture? What are some of those big things that you notice that you either like or don't like or have had to adapt to? Um, Because it's a lot has changed. Yeah. And you know what? I think that the, I'm going to answer, but I want to start with saying, like, I think one of the reasons why Superfan works is that it's such a friendly, happy place for a celebrity to live. Because I do think it's really tough on them um, to be out in the media landscape. And you just kind of want to go somewhere where someone's not going to ask you about your marriage or your divorce. It's or an like, embrace. Yeah. Yeah. So this is like a very warm, family friendly, like wonderful show. I will say the biggest difference, obviously, you know, boring is social media. But when I first started in this business, if a, if a star wanted to tell something to the public, they had to go through, um, you know, a newspaper or a television program to show that news, whether it be a baby, a marriage, a new house, a new film. Um, now, they don't have to do that. They can just go to their fan bases directly. Um, but I think it's really interesting. And I think the world is changing back a little bit. I remember when we were in development for Superfan, Adele had her big um, CBS special on that won oh, right. all those Grammys and Emmys. And and everyone was like, wow, I can't believe she like didn't go to Netflix or something like that. And Adele's reckoning, allegedly, this is what I heard, was like, no, no, no. I want to be blasted into every home in America. I don't want people have to click on me. I want to just be there. And I think there is something about network television, you know, classic journalism, newspapers, where if you do that kind of press and you're just blasted out to the public, they don't necessarily have to follow you on Instagram. Like your your followers are going to follow you, but we see these stars be like, oh, I don't want to do press. I don't want to do press, but I think they do themselves a disservice. And I think the Barbie movie is a perfect example. What happens when you embrace both sides? They absolutely embraced pop culture and social media and gave us memes and songs and everything, but they did so many traditional interviews and they were so supportive of television and newspaper and magazines and and what do they have now? A billion dollars. A hundred percent. Great answer. Um, and then, I mean, through throughout a lot of that time, a, a big content for you has been Lady Gang. It's been on yes. since... I mean, you guys have been producing it since 2015, right? Almost, I mean, eight years. Um, Has having had that as a constant in your career and life, I mean, I'm guessing at some point you're not really sure exactly what else comes after a certain project or when when a certain chapter closes, but you've still had Lady Gang. Has having that as a constant been a boon for you or sort of a comforting feeling along uh, along the way? Because it's it's been a huge success, but even just that knowing... Okay, next week we're we're still going to have a lady gang taping or recording. What's that feeling been like? Yeah, well, first of all, actually, just before I got on with you, I got a 
uh, some cupcakes and a beautiful car delivered from my co-host Jack and Becca to my hotel room in New York. Wishing amazing. It was like so amazing. Um, you know, I think with with Lady Gang, it it gave me the confidence that I can create something that can be very successful and make people a lot of money. And so like when I went in the room, for instance, to pitch super fan, it wasn't like, Oh, I don't know what I'm doing. Like, no, I know how, I know how to can make communities and connect people. I read a book or heard Steve Harvey do a interview once where he was like, you got to have five jobs at all times. So when you get fired from one, you won't care. And lady gang was just sort of supposed to be the backup plan. Becca Tobin, my co-host was on Glee and Glee had just ended. And we were like, let's just do this until we can like get whatever the dream job is. And then it turned into the dream job, um, becoming a New York Times bestselling author with our book, like having our show on E. Um, It's been incredible. And I think what's even, let me tell you this, what's even more special is the community. Yes, it's great to have success. Yes, it's great to have money. Yes, it's great to have a backup plan or something to do next Wednesday of Superfan Bombs. But like I posted, we're doing a big uh, Times Square uh, premiere and I posted in our Lady Gang community chat, which we have with like 35,000 women. And I was like, hey guys, we're doing this free event in Times Square. They've already organized themselves. They've got gold star balloons so that they, go, they can all meet each other and sit together. And like, like that's that's what, what it's all about. about. Yeah. And that's something that you guys have built on your own and it's it just feeds itself. And that that's so special. That's really, I mean, that, that's so rare too. Am I the queen of the fangirls? Am I just like creating fan communities and bringing us all? You have, together? you have so many super fans, Kelty. I love it. I have it. so many. Super- <laughs> I was walking in an interview today, and someone wanted me to sign a picture of myself, and I was like, "I'm sorry, is this the Kelty Knight episode <laughs> super fan? You have to yes. wait in line." <laughs> um, to close it out, I mean, so we're, and this is premier for super fan. We have a lot of great artists featured on on this first season. But who was the first person that you were a super fan of and that potentially if, if they were to be on super fan that you would be one of those five people competing for their for their VIP package? Well, Nate and I like to joke because Nate is a LL Cool J super fan and we have LL. I'm a Shania super fan. I could have competed. I, I saw you won. singing along. I saw you I singing along. I would have won. The, I songs. grew up on Shania Twain. I'm from the middle of nowhere, Canada. Shania Twain is our queen. Um, I have to tell you, when we do season two, Celine Dion must be on the show and i am sending my love and prayers to her because i know she's yes. not well right now she doesn't have to sing she doesn't have to perform i will make a giant gold like seat for her uh, you know a, an altar and she can just sit and enjoy because i want i want her to experience this so badly especially now that she's not in a good place i just want that joy of like her hearing these stories so celine is like number one on my list if we, mm. yeah that, that would be, that'd be when we do a second season that'd be a pretty special way for you know, her to, her to somehow come back, hope, knock on wood. So um, yeah. I love that. That's amazing. Um, well, Kelty, when can people watch Superfan? Tee it up before we, before we close it out here. Perfect. Superfan is uh, every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. starting on August 9th. We follow Big Brother. I know everyone's already watching Big Brother. I'm, t- I'm tweeting along with Big Brother. Um, and so just stay put. We have six episodes. And it's just, I want to say this, it's really important that the fans that watch vote. Um, so you're, the vote is real. It's on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Use the hashtag of the final two. We'll prompt you during the show. But it's real. So you're... America is deciding who wins these prizes. There's no, yeah, that's it. So it's really important that everyone watch and vote live. Amazing. Everyone check it out. It's really great. I've seen the first two episodes. It's so fun. You'll be singing along as well. So, who are you um, competing on? Who am I competing on? It'd be Brittany, 100%. Brittany <gasps> is, was, I was, I still am a super fan. So that, that'd be it. I love for it. For sure. Yeah. Well, Kelty, thank you so much for being so generous with your time. Congratulations on the show. Everyone's going to love it. And um, and enjoy, enjoy, ba- bask in the glow of, of this premiere. I'm trying so yes. much. Thank you oh so gosh. much. Of Thanks course. Of course. Thanks for tuning in to We Should Talk. I hope you enjoyed the interview. You can find out more about In The Know at InTheKnow.com. You can follow me, Gibson John, at Gibsonoma on Twitter and Instagram. And you can listen to all of our interviews, past and future, by searching We Should Talk wherever you get your podcasts. Hope to see you next time.